Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. My, my. The day's coming, church. Now, 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 now listen, let's, let's, let's make sure that we stay straight here. Because when people talk about the second coming of Jesus, there are two phases of his second coming. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which we just read, the Bible said he comes for his church. In Revelation 19, at the battle of Armageddon, the Bible says he comes with his church. So how can he come with his church until, uh, unless he comes for his church so that we might be where he is, as Jesus said, that we might come back with him. Now we're looking at the end of the earth, uh, church age. I believe when the rapture happens, that will be the exclamation point. Church age will be over. Now watch this, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're going to read on. It says this, now brothers and sisters, this is in context, about the times and dates, we do not need to write you, for you know very well the day of the Lord, the last days, the end times, the tribulation period, it's going to come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on who? It will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. I'm escaping. Yeah. You escaping? Amen. Verse 4. But you, brothers and sisters, you're not in darkness. So this day should not surprise you like a thief. Come on, saints of God. We can see it outlaying right before our very eyes. You can't turn the news on without seeing it happening. Yeah. It's right before our very... We know what's going on. You are the children of light. And you're children of the day. Oh, that's real good news right there. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, uh, but let us uh, be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. And the hope of salvation is our helmet. Verse 9, don't miss this one. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath. That's not judgment. This isn't talking about judgment. This is talking about, remember, this is all in context because Paul is writing about in that day, the day of the Lord, the seven-year tribulation period, the end of the age. He says, you, thank God, have not been appointed to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, uh, he died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Paul reemphasizes in verse 11, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Now come on, do these uh, passages encourage somebody's heart in here today? So Paul is writing to us, he's saying encourage one another. What's the encouragement? There's an escape coming. My God. Now that, listen, that's not to say we won't suffer persecution. We will and we are. It's already begun. Buckle up, Baco. This, this past week, you know, we just, we just launched two more Facebook pages. We launched one in Central Africa. We launched one in West Africa. So we're now reaching Nigeria. And if you know anything about Nigeria, northern Nigeria is mostly Islamic. So we have a brother that just emailed us and stating what should he do because he's under severe persecution. Should he stay there or should he move out? So now listen, listen, there's severe persecution going around the world. It just hasn't come here yet. Are you with me? Yes. But Paul says we're going to escape the wrath that is coming. Now the hatred toward the Jews, listen, that's just the natural object 
that they loathe. Because the one they really hate is the number one Jew, and his name is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers of principality, spiritual wickedness in high places. This is a spiritual war going on in the Middle East, Watch what we're watching unveil on our news every evening. We see this all the way back to the promise of Messiah, back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when God wrote, he said, the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent. Yeah. That was the promise of our Messiah. And it, that, that, that hatred of Satan and the Jewish people, because that's who Messiah was coming through, still exists today. Yeah. Watch this. Revelation chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. It says, it's tail. This is speaking of Satan or Lucifer swept a third of the stars out of the sky. In other words, he took one-third of the devils with him, one-third of the angels with him, and he flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman, who is Israel, who was about to give birth, uh, that it might devour her child the moment he was born. The child is the Messiah. The woman is Israel. Verse 5, she, Israel, Jewish people gave birth to a son named Jesus Christ, a male, who will rule the nations with an iron scepter. So we see this hatred toward Israel. We see this hate. You can't even explain the hatred that we're seeing on TV. It's incredible. So Satan has been opposed to the Jewish people from day one because Messiah, the Savior of the world, would come through them. Listen, we are just the spiritual offspring of Messiah. Are you born again today? Amen. Well, if you're born again, we are grafted into the Jewish people. We are grafted into the Jewish nation. We are born again. We've been born into the kingdom. L listen, saints of God. These protests that we see going on, is just the beginning. The violent hatred that they have toward the Jewish people. And most of them don't even realize what they're hating. But there's a saying in Islam that goes like this. We fight on Saturday, but Sunday's coming. Let me interpret that for you. We fight the Jews today on Saturday, but the Christians are coming on Sunday. They're coming for us next. Don't be, oh, really? It's in the Bible. Jesus says all men from around the world will hate you. Not because of who you are, but because of who's. Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yerusha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. Now, you can help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth by simply hitting that like button subscribing to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell and last but not least share this message with all your friends and family well god bless you and maranatha jesus christ is coming soon